वेलकम बैक टू न्यू वीडियो एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोना शो यू हाउ यू कैन राइट योर ओन मल्टी मॉडल अपलीकेशन विद जेट पैक कम्पोज सो वी विल लर्न अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स सो आई एम गोना टेल यू वन बाई वन वॉट आर थिंग्स यू विल लर्न इन दिस वीडियो सो फर्स्ट थिंग यू विल लर्न हाउ टू मैनेज योर बिल्ड डॉट ग्रेल डिपेंडेंसीज बिकॉज इट इज अ सुपर इंपॉर्टेंट इफ यू डोंट मैनेज योर बिल्ड डॉट ग्रेल डिपेंडेंसीज प्रॉपरली यूर गोना कॉपी पेज डॉट डिपेंडेंसी अगेन एंड अगेन so it is not recommended way because in multi module application we have a lot of modules and each module contain its own build or build file so at some point we have to manage this thing at one place and gonna reuse that thing that dependencies again and again in our build or build file so we we will learn how to do this efficiently second thing you will learn how to use clean architecture with model view with model pattern so we we'll learn how to do this in multi module application apart from this at some point of your application you have to navigate from your one feature to another feature and it is a you know typical thing for those who never done multi module uh, programming so we'll see how to do navigation from one feature to another feature uh, which is a, uh, as i say it is a important thing because without navigation your application will not create never create after this we'll see how to use tagger hilt in our multi module application because uh we have to manage our dependencies properly so we use tag dependency injection framework and dagger hilt is our dependency injection framework so we we'll learn how to da use dagger hilt in our multi module application uh, we use retrofit use flow coordinate coroutine and also we see how to manage our jetpack compose screen state management so we we'll learn a lot of things and please stuck this video to the end and you will see how to do all these thing in our multi module application our first feature in this feature we have a search movie search bar where you can search your movies so like i'm going to type harry now here you can see uh, we saw a list of movies which is coming from our back end okay so this is a feature we are going to build in the in our first video so let's get started we are going to look how to manage our build dot grid dependencies in our multi module application so first you need you need to create a new project so for that go to file new new project choose empty compose activity because we are going to use jetpack compose for our ui click on next here you need to fill the information of your application like name package name location what is your minimum sdk all these stuffs lastly you just simply click on this finish button and it will generate a new project for you so i had already created a new project so i'm not going to create a new project again so i simply cancel this and this is my project now we need to manage our dependencies so for managing our dependencies just change the view of your project android to project mode and here create a new directory and directory name is build source and within this we're going to create a new file naming build dot gradle dot kts and make sure the naming is way super important because if you spell wrong these names then it will it won't work basically so first you need to write some plugins and within this plugin write this line kotlin dsl and after that we have repositories so within this repositories i use maven central and simply sync this thing now you can see everything is recognizable by our android studio here we have kotlin dsl repositories and this build source is also you know change in in a form of module so this build source is present in our root level that is why it is accessible from every build dot gradel for each module now within this just going to create a new directory and the directory name is source main java within this you need to create a new kotlin file and the file name is dependencies to you uh, if you prefer any other kind of name you will provide no problem at all dependencies so this one is my preferable name that is why i give the dependencies name so within this what i am going to do i am creating object naming version and we have our dependencies specific objects like if we have a dagger hill dependency so i provide object name dagger hill okay so now i'm going to change uh, this view mode from project to android and jump into our module app and here you can see we have lot of dependencies so i just pick one of them and use this thing in our and use this you know dependency in our here file so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new 
object depths within this i'm going to create a const while naming core and paste our dependency over here so just convert this thing into a string and take out this version from here and use that version in our version object so paste this thing convert this into a string and now it's time to use this version name in our depths object core dependency now i'm going to use this core in our module app level so replace this thing with depths dot core sync your project and you will see after the completion of this sync this thing is recognizable by our you know build dot gradle so wait for a moment so here you can see our core is now you know recognizable by our build dot gradle so like this uh, we have a lot of dependencies so i'm gonna convert these dependencies in this form but before that within our dependency i'm gonna copy paste a few dependencies which i wanna use in this project all these dependencies i'm gonna use in this project there are some dependencies which i extra put in this file because i might use this this file in my other projects too so that is why i put a lot of dependence dependencies in here so if you are gonna use all this thing you can use it no problem but still i am pasting all of this thing in this file okay now jump into our module app level and here i'm gonna replace all this implementation with our depths or you can say our dependencies file libraries so i replace everything so now it's time to sync our project and see if we got any error or not so now our sync is complete and you can see there will be no error so it will it will say to migrate our project so just click on this run migration and it will migrate your kotlin code from you know previous version to newer version and one more thing go to your build.gradle root level or you can say project level here you need to change the compose ui version because i'm gonna use the latest one which is 1.4.0 alpha uh, 05 05 i think and for this compose ui version you have at least 1.8.0 kotlin version and if you change this thing you have to change your kotlin compile extension version too so change this thing from 1.2.0 to 1.4.0 and sync your project our gradle build successfully sync and here you can see in the same dialog so again run your migration so our syncing is complete now we are going to create few modules for our project so we have three type of modularization so first one is layer wise modularization second one is feature one feature wise and the third one is combined this the combining of these two is the third one so the layer wise modularization we have three modules data layer domain layer and our ui layer second one is feature wise modularization in which we have a feature like a module is representing a feature like we have any kind of authentication uh, in our application so we create a different module naming auth and within this we have our managing our authentication system so each feature is represented by a single module now the third one is basically the combination of these two so basically we have a feature like you have authentication and within this authentication we have three layer data domain ui so the combination of these two is what we are going to use in this project so let's get started and create some modules in order to understand how we actually use this thing and how to create that modelization in our application so for this go to file new select new module go to android library and here make sure to create a give a module name so the first module which i'm gonna create is feature okay within this feature we have our movie feature and within this movie feature we have data layer domain layer and ui layer so first thing i'm gonna create my data layer and within this package name i want to change the example to feature and what feature feature dot movie dot data okay uncheck this and finish it so this one is our first module movie and within this movie feature we have our data layer now we want to create two more layer uh, ui layer and our domain layer so go to your feature here we have a movie and our data layer within this now create our domain layer and the presentation layer so go to module and dot library feature movie 
and within this uh, we have our domain layer and replace this example with feature movie feature movie domain uncheck this finish it so now i'm going to create my ui layer so go to your module android library remove this thing with ui and replace this example with feature movie so feature dot movie ui uncheck this finish it so we have feature naming movie and within this we have three layer data layer domain layer and ui layer uh, like this we have one more feature which is actually used to show the movie details to our user so for this create a new module and go to your android library replace this my library with movie underscore details and replace this example with feature movie details and within this we have our data layer actually all right so uncheck this finish it all right so here you can see we have our data layer like this we have our domain and ui layers so module android library uh, here we have our domain and replace this example with uh, feature dot movie details uncheck this finish it like this we have our ui layer so generate a new module for our ui go to android library remove this my library to ui and replace this example with feature dot movie details uncheck this finish it all right so now we have two feature movie and movie details within our feature now it's time to create a new module for our core so select new module go to android library and here i'm gonna create core module so within this core we have our network thing so we have our network thing like uh, you know data providers we have in this particular module and the package name is actually not dot com dot example dot network it is com dot core dot network uncheck this finish it so it will generate a new module naming core and within this we have our network package network module not package All right so within this core i'm going to create one more module for our common use case and the module name is common replace this example with core common uncheck this thing and lastly finish it all right so now we have network module common module and we need to create one more module for naming feature api so this is used in order to you know navigate from one screen to another screen so android library and the name is feature underscore api change this example to core uncheck this and finish it so we had already created all of our modules which we need in our project okay so now we will move with our network module so within our network module we have data providers which actually consume our rest api to get data from web service so first thing i will show you the rest apis which we will consume in this application so this is our website so the movie db.org so i am going to consume here movie db apis so we have these two apis okay so the first api is actually returning us a list of movies and the second api is uh, return back the movie details of a particular movie okay so you need an api key in order to access these apis so first you register yourself and after that click on this avatar go to settings and here you see api so click on this api generate your own api key and after that api key you will you will use this rest apis because it require api key to access you know this apis so i'm gonna copy these two apis and come back in our project go in our network module so we will use retrofit for integrating the rest api so first thing i want to add dependencies in our build.gradl for network core network module so here i am gonna Im implement our retrofit dependencies so retrofit dot retrofit and we require two more thing the first one is ok http and the second one is json converter okay so we use json converter factory to create our json response to model classes 
or Gradle have been synced. I also add Dagger Hill dependency and its plugin on the build.gradle network level and on the project level. Okay, and sync your project, you will now able to use Dagger Hill in your network module. So go back in your network module and I'm gonna create my first interface which is api service and this interface is actually used by retrofit to you know implement the the logic using which he got the response from our rest api so the first method is http get method suspend function get movie list and the return type is not determined yet so in order to create a data class go back to your response copy the response come back in your project and create a new package naming model within this model I'm gonna use this third party plugin copy paste my all the response and give the name to your data class which you generate which you will generate okay so movie list response so within this we got two data classes the first one is movie list response and the second one is result so actually this result represent our movie so i'm gonna change the name to movie dto okay go back to your api service and now the return type is movie list response but we don't know from where we got the response so we have to connect this function or you can say method with our rest api so we will provide the information of our rest api in this block so go back copy this come back to your project and i'm gonna paste that rest api here so this is our base url and rest all the thing is endpoint so copy your endpoint go to get paste here and we have two queries api key and the query so i'm generating two query for them so the first one is our api key api key type string and the second one is our query which actually a query q in a form of string okay so this is a function and the implementation is written by our retrofit library so we don't take care of uh, the implementation thing now we also we had set up our dagger hilt in our network module so i'm gonna create a new package and the package name is ti within this i'm gonna create module for our dagger hilt so i'm gonna call this network module this is an object and we use install in and use singleton component class this is a module so in order to tell our dagger this is a module annotate this object with module okay now in order to provide dependency use provide annotation and provide so i'm going to provide my api service by using this function so api service return as I said, the implementation of API service is gonna return by our retrofit. So we use a retrofit builder and here we need to pass our base URL. So go back to your API service and we have our base URL from here to here. Copy this, paste here. And then we also need converter factory. So this converter factory is used to convert our JSON response to this data class so basically it will map our json to these model classes okay so you we have to add that converter factory here so json converter factory dot create okay so lastly i'm gonna build my retrofit object and by using this retrofit object i'm gonna write my api service implementation okay now it's time to create our data providers so i'm gonna create a new package and the package name is data providers within the data provider i'm gonna create a class and the class name will be movie data providers and within this i'm gonna inject my api service import this inject notation within this i'm gonna create a suspend function naming get movie list and here i'm gonna pass my api key which is a form of string and our query by using our api service i'm gonna call my get movie list pass our api key in here and our query 
okay now we will use this data providers in our data module so this is all for our network module what we what we had do in this network module first we will generate our api service here uh, we write a function this function is going to be implemented by our retrofit library so we don't take care of the implementation part uh, we have our model classes uh, like movie dto so this will contain the movie uh, details this is our movie list response which actually replicating our json response and we have our dagger hill setup so we generate a network module and within this network module we had a provide function so basically it will provide our api service implementation so this api service implementation is going to return by our retrofit so this is all for our network module now we will continue with our first feature which is movie feature so go to your feature we have two module movie and movie details go to your movie module and here we will see three layers data layer domain layer and ui layer so the responsibility of this layer are something like this so data layer is responsible for getting data either it's from local database or from web service or rest api second one is our domain layer so domain layer is used to write our use cases in that we write our business logic okay third layer is our ui layer so in ui layer we have our screens or activity or fragment in our case we use jetpack compose so we have our screens in ui layer and also we have our view model so view model is used to write presentation logic like if you write any kind of validation or all those things is present in your view model and the your screen is actually representing your data to the user okay so this is a simple uh, responsibility of our layers so what i'm gonna do i will continue with our data mod module so within our data module i'm gonna create few packages so the first package is our dependency injection second one is our repository implementation our repository package we write the implementation of repository which is present in our domain layer okay so domain layer is simply write the interface repository interface and we will implement that interface in our data layer all right so now it's time to jump in our domain layer and within our domain layer i'm gonna create few packages so the first package is model so this model is called domain layer model and this model is actually used in our ui layer we didn't use data transfer object in our domain layer we use domain layer models in our domain layer and this model is actually used in our ui layer after this i'm going to create one more package naming repository so it will contain our repository interface and lastly i think we have our use cases okay so in our repository i'm going to write my movie repository interface so movie repository this is an interface and within this interface we have suspend function get movie list it has api key and a query okay the return type is very simple list of movie so this movie is actually a domain layer object domain layer data class so we will create this movie in our model so this is a data class and the naming of this data class is movie and within this i'm gonna have my image url because my first screen is only show the image to our user okay this is why i use image url all right so now go back to your movie repository import this movie now we will implement this interface in our data layer so for that go to your repository right click create a new class and the class name is movie repo implementation use your movie repository this is not accessible because it present in a different module so in order to access this movie repository we need to connect this data layer with our domain layer so go to your build.gedl of data layer okay this one and here i'm gonna write a simple line which is used to connect this module to our domain layer module so we have feature within feature we have our movie feature and we have domain layer within this movie module so sync now go back to your movie repository implementation now you will see that this movie repository is accessible 
after the sync so import this implement its member functions so we have get movie list so we will use our data providers in order to take data from web service so first i am gonna use inject constructor private well movie data providers this is not accessible again because network module is separate and data layer is not know about network module so in order to tell our data layer that you use network module for this movie data products go your build.gradle and duplicate this we have core within core we have our network and within network we have our data providers so sync now go back to your repository implementation and after the sync you will see that movie data products is available right. so import this now here i'm gonna use return keyword movie data providers get movie list use your api key and query and it is giving me an error because of the type so required type is list of movie but it will return the movie list response so what i will do i will write a mapper in order to map this with this so go here within our data layer not domain layer within our data layer i'm gonna create a package and the package name is mapper and within this mapper i'm gonna create a simple file and the file name is mapper within this file i'm gonna create a extension function movie list response to domain movie list return type is list of movie use return keyword as result and i'm gonna use map generate a movie object and within this i'm gonna pass the image poster path okay so by doing this you actually convert movie list response to list of movies now i'm gonna use this in our movie repository implementation so two domain movie list okay now it is not giving me an error now go back to your i think it will okay so inject is not recognizable because of dagger hilt is not you know configured in this module so we need to configure the dagger hilt for this module so in order to do this go to your build.gradle of your data layer and here need to implement dagger hilt dependencies so dagger hilt hilt and then it's compiler so compiler is used with capped and on the top you need to add the plugins so in order to add plugin we already did this thing in our network module so go there and copy these two things come back to your data layer paste here sync now and import this inject okay now it's time to write our module for dagger hilt so i'm gonna create a data layer module install in with singleton component annotate this thing with module because it represent a module for dagger hill and here i'm gonna provide my repository implementation so provide movie repo and the return type is movie repository return movie repository implementation its requirement is movie data providers so go to your network module and check whether you provide this dependency or not i think you will not provide this dependency so write a provide annotation provide data or you can say movie data provider okay so this data provider require api service so pass this api service and return type is movie data providers movie data providers pass api service so this is a return type okay now jump back to your data layer module and this time use movie data providers as a argument and simply use this in our 
movie repository implementation so now it is able to inject movie repository okay so yeah that's it for our data layer of movie feature okay so now it's time to jump in our domain layer so within our domain layer we have use cases so it's time to write use cases so the first use case is get movie list use case okay within this i'm using operator function invoke and uh, we need to pass api key and the query i'm gonna use flow so the return type of flow is so in order to manage our ui we create a sealed class so i'm gonna create that sealed class in our common module because this sealed class is gonna used for each feature that is why i will create this in our common module so the name of this file is ui event and this is a sealed class make sure this is a generic class type t and within this i'm gonna create my first ui event which is a loading okay extend this with ui event like this we have success and we need to pass data okay this data is going to be passed with our ui event so that is why i'm gonna make while data which is a type of t and its initial value is null second we have message so message is type of string and initially this thing is also null so now it's time to use our success event so in our success we need, we get data from our rest api or data layer so that data is going to be passed in our ui event like this we have error and in error we receive few message pass those message in our ui event okay so this is our simple ui event in order to manage our ui now in order to access this ui ui event first i will go in my domain layer build dot gradle so this one and here i need to connect implementation project and the core common sync now after sync you will able to use ui event in this module go back to your get movie list use case and here you see okay so you got the ui event and the type is list of movie all right so within our flow we are gonna use movie repository so within our use case i'm gonna inject movie repository so movie repository but this inject is not recognizable because we didn't set up our dagger hit for this module so in order to set up go to your data layer build dot giddle copy these dependencies paste in your domain layer dependencies and on the top you have these two plugins copy this plugin paste this plugin in your domain layer and sync now okay after syncing after syncing go to your get movie list use case and import this inject all right so now we will use movie repository in this flow okay so this flow has catch if anything goes wrong then this catch plug will execute so in this scenario i'm gonna emit the ui event dot error and pass the message okay and i wanna run this flow on dispatcher io okay and on the top of the block i'm gonna emit our ui event dot success i'm gonna consume my movie repository get movie list pass our api key and the query okay so this is our implementation of invoke but before sending our success event we have to send the loading event so loading which is coming from ui event so by using this event we actually show a progress bar or any kind of thing which you want to do during loading 
so this is the complete implementation of our use case now i'm going to create a dependency injection package for this domain module in our dependency injection i'm going to create a new object and the object name is domain layer module install in singleton component and create this thing with module and within this i'm going to write a provide function which will provide our use case so get movie list use case okay so return type is get movie list use case a return get movie list use case and this requirement is movie repository so pass movie repository and consume movie repository in our get movie list use case now this movie repository is going to be provide by our data layer dependency injection module so over here all right so by doing this i think we successfully complete our this feature movie feature data layer and domain layer now it's time to implement our ui layer so now it's time to our ui layer implementation but before moving with our ui layer i think we first set up our navigation because it's very important in multi module project and at the same time it is typical for those who never do navigation in multi module project so i try my best to elaborate you in a very 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 simple manner so let's get started and see how we implement nested navigation or navigation in multi module application so in our core i already created this feature api and within this feature api you need to create an interface and the interface name feature api within this feature api i'm going to create a function and the function name is register graph now this has two input the first one is nav controller which is nav host controller and the second one is nav graph builder nav graph builder okay so these two things is coming up from jetpack compose navigation library so i'm going to add that implementation in our feature api build dot gradal so go here i'm going to add the implementation jetpack compose navigation okay i'm going to sync this all right so sync has been completed go to your feature api now it is available so import nav host controller and import your nav graph builder every feature has its own navigation graph so in multi module projects we follow nested navigation so a feature represent a simple small navigation for its own feature like we have this movie feature so this movie feature contain its own navigation graph movie details contain its own nested navigation graph or you can say sub graph so now i am going to go back in our ui layer and within our ui layer i want to use this feature api so first i need to add this feature api module in our ui layer so jump in your build dot gradle movie ui and here on the top i'm going to write few line of code in order to connect the feature api so project colon we have core within core we have our feature api sync now so now go back to your ui layer and here i'm going to create one package and the package name is navigation within this navigation i'm going to create one interface which is specific to this feature and the name of that interface is movie api okay this is an interface and it will also extend our feature api and here if you want to create any uh, function which you implement you will do but i'm not going to you know create any kind of function which we implement so after this interface you need to create one more object and the object name is internal movie feature api okay and this will use our feature api or you can say implement feature api and okay so we don't have this nav controller or nav graph builder because we didn't add the dependency for that in our ui module 
so go to your feature api copy this dependency go to your ui layer build.gradle paste this thing sync now and after the syncing you will see these th these two things uh, is recognizable so now you have your register graph so it's it is the right time to register our movie feature nested navigation graph with our root so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use our nav graph builder so we have our nav graph builder which we pass from this function and in this we have navigation okay we need to pass here start destination so pass your start destination and the second one is route okay so these two things is necessary for our nested navigation so because it is a nested navigation it has its own route by using that route we recognize that this navigation is uh, represented our movie nested navigation okay so for that i'm let us suppose i pass you know movie nested navigation simple now star destination as you know star destination is the destination which you want to show on the first time when you jump on this navigation so within this we have composable as usual and suppose you want to show your movie so route name is movie and here if you create any kind of screen or composable screen you will use that screen like movie screen and the star destination is our in our case it is movie so on the first time when we navigate to this nested navigation graph it will show us this movie screen and this is the route of that movie screen so it will compare if this route is present here or not with composable so yes it is present so it will check if it is equal then it will render this screen okay so using this you actually register that navigation graph in your root so we did not finish that process right now but we actually add this nested navigation in our root now it's time to go in our app module and you know finishing up all of the navigation setup so in order to set up our navigation go to your app module and within your app module you first need to set up our dagger hilt because without using dagger hilt you didn't uh, use navigation in your project so i'm gonna create one class naming base application this is a class extend application and annotate this thing with hilt android app not recognizable because we don't set up dagger hilt for our app module so i think we we already did the setup for data module so go here copy all these stuffs go to build.gradle module app level file on the plugins paste this thing again go to your data layer copy all of this thing go to your module app level and simply paste all this thing okay sync your project after that it will be available hilt android app in this file import this now it's time to register this application go to your manifest within our application tag we have name register your base application and one more thing i'm gonna take my internet permission because we use internet in our application all right now it is time to create a navigation provider so i'm gonna create a new package naming navigation and here i'm gonna create a data class so that data class name is navigation provider okay so within this we have our apis like if we have our feature movie within this within our ui we have movie api okay so this movie api is gonna pass in our navigation provider okay so well movie api okay this movie api is not recognizable because it is not connected to our module so go to build.gradle module app level and this time add implementation project and the feature movie ui okay sync your project 
and after that you will able to recognize this movie api movie api here is available all right now it's time to provide this movie api now because movie api is an interface we need to write the implementation for this movie api so i'm going to create a class and the class name is movie api implementation which implement this movie api and within this we only have register graph and this register graph uses our internal movie feature api so internal movie feature api register graph and within this you need to pass your nap controller and nap graph builder okay so now we will provide this implementation using dagger yield so we want to create a dependency injection package and within this i'm going to create a new ui module object install in so we did not set up our dagger hilt for ui module so i'm going to do this so go back to your data layer copy all these dependencies go back to your ui layer add these dependencies and from data layer on the top you have these two plugins copy those plugins go to your ui layer build dot kettle paste that plugins on the top sync your project and after that your installing has been available to you import your installing and within this i'm gonna use singleton component class this represent a dagger module so annotate this thing with dagger module and on the ui module write a provide function which provide our movie api so return type is our movie api implementation okay that's it so now it will provide a movie api implementation and that implementation is used in our app module and by using this implementation we create this navigation provider data class okay so in order to use this navigation provider so i'm going to create a new package and the package name is ti within this i'm going to create app module object install in singleton component class annotate this with module and here i'm gonna write a provide function provide navigation provider return, return type is navigation provider and i'm gonna return a navigation provider but it requires movie api so pass movie api and use this movie api here so this movie api is gonna inject by our feature movie api dependency injection over here okay so from here it will generate a movie api and our app module navigation our app module navigation provider will consume that movie api we will create few constant in order to manage our route so that constant i will create in my common module so go to your core and within your core you have common and within this common i'm gonna create one package and the package name is navigation underscore constant within this i'm gonna create a file and that file name is navigation constant i'm gonna create an object and i'm gonna manage my constant uh, depending on the feature so like we have our movie feature so i'm gonna call this object name movie feature and within this we have const well so the first one is our nested route so i'm gonna name this nested route and the nested route value is movie nested route and the first screen is our movie screen so i'm gonna call the variable name is movie screen route and i'm using the same name here movie screen route okay so we have only these two constant right now in future we also have the movie detail feature object okay so for now just leave this thing at it, as it is so within your build dot gradle feature movie ui layer i'm gonna add this line of code implementation project and within this we have core common sync now 
and go back to your internal movie feature api so here you see we start we give our star destination movie so just replace this thing with our created constant so movie movie feature and the star destination is our movie screen route okay now replace this movie nested route with our created variable so movie feature movie screen nested route not movie screen route okay so copy this route and paste within this composable all right so now jump back in your app module and here within navigation i'm gonna create a file which which have naming app navigation this is a file and within within this file i'm gonna create a composable naming app nav graph all right so within this app nav graph i'm gonna pass my nav controller okay so the dependency is not present in this build.grill so i'm gonna add that dependency so go here add implementation and we use jetpack compose navigation sync now go back to your app navigation and here you will see after the syncing nav controller is available so i'm gonna use nav host controller okay and the second parameter is very important parameter which is navigation provider all right and within this i'm gonna create nav host pass your nav controller and within this graph we use start destination and the start destination is nothing but our movie nested navigation graph so pass that navigation route here so the navigation route is present in our movie api internal movie feature api and here you can see the nested navigation route is movie feature nested route so copy this go back to your app navigation and paste here but it is not recognizable again module is not connected to our common so i'm gonna go and add this in our build.gradle module app level so we have core and within this core we have common sync now right so import this and within this i'm gonna use my navigation provider so use your navigation provider it has movie api that contain register graph pass your nav controller pass your nav graph builder okay so this module is not connected to our feature api module that is why it will give me this error so go to your build.gradle module app level and add this feature api so this feature api is present in our core feature api sync now and you will see the error would be gone the error will be gone after the syncing see the error would be gone so now we will use our app nav graph in main activity so first i'm gonna create a composable app okay and within this i'm gonna cut this surface paste here and we need to pass nav controller nav host controller in this app and create a variable naming nav controller which is initialized with remember nav controller remove this navigator and after that you call your app pass your nav controller in it and within this surface i'm gonna call my app navig app nav graph pass your nav host controller and the navigation provider so this navigation provider is actually provided by your dagger hilt so you need to use android entry point and on the top i'm gonna use field injection let init var navigation provider now this navigation provider is used in our app so navigation provider add this thing in your app now it's time to pass this navigation provider in our app navigation graph that's it everything is i think complete uh, for the navigation more thing uh, i forgot to add internal before this object because we only use this internal movie feature api within this module that is why we put internal keyword 
before the object okay rest all the thing is fine so i'm gonna rebuild this thing if any error is occur then we will fix that error too all right so our gradle build successfully finished that means no error encounter during the build so yep we complete our navigation setup now it's time to move on with our ui module for movie feature it's time to complete our ui layer so within your package create a new package naming screen and i'm gonna create view model class movie search view model extend this with view model and annotate this with hilt view model because it is a view model and we will perform constructor injection here so private well and we are gonna inject our use case so get movie list use case okay so it is not available because our ui ui module doesn't know about domain layer or domain module so go to your build dot gradle and duplicate this i'm gonna use feature movie module and within this movie module we have domain layer so use our domain and sync it now after the syncing you will see get movie list use cases available here so let me import this get movie list use case now it is available all right after that we will create a data class which actually act as a state holder for our jetpack compose screen so within this screen i'm gonna create that data class so name would be movie search state holder we have first variable naming is loading type boolean initial value false second is our actual data in my case it is a list of movie make sure you import the right one and initialize it with null the last one is our error message so if any kind of error occur though we will receive message from our use case and that message is gonna store in this data class error variable okay jump back to your movie search view model and i'm gonna create a private well movie list variable which is a mutable state of our state holder type so movie search state holder okay now we will create a variable naming movie list which is a type of state and the type would be same movie search state holder initialize this with underscore movie list import this state all right so i'm going to create one more variable which is actually used to store our query which user type so underscore query which is a type of mutable state flow and the type would be string initialize with mutable state flow empty string create a variable naming query and this time it is a type of state not a state a state flow and here the type would be same string and initialize this with upper query all right so now we have two variable the first one is actually contain the state holder second one is contain our query now i'm gonna create a function get movie list and within this we pass our api key which is a type of string and second is our actual query we use view model scope to launch the coroutine and here we will use our use case so get movie list use case and within this we pass our api key and the query and we use on each so on each is basically trigger every time when anything is emitted from our get movie list use case now i'm gonna launch this thing in our view model scope so within our on each you see we got a ui event so i'm gonna use when expression pass our it and i'm gonna check its type so suppose the type is loading and we have two more states like we got error or we got success so in loading case we are gonna use our movie list value and update that value with a new movie search state holder and this time the is loading value would be true not false now copy this paste in your error case and for error case the error message would be 
new one so error it dot message so this message is coming up from our use case all right so just like this go to your success event and here this time we will pass the data so it dot data so this is a completion of our get movie list so basically uh, we trigger our use case and on each emission we run this piece of code it will check our event if the loading event it will simply update our movie list value with the new state holder and if it is a case of loading then is loading is true if it is a case of error we will get error message if it is a case of success we will get our actual data so after that i'm going to create one more function naming set query and within this we pass string and we are going to update our query so query dot value is s okay so i'm going to use init block and within this init block i'm using v model scope launch basically we launch a coroutine and i'm going to use my query dot debounce so basically debounce is uh, used to produce a delay suppose your user type a b c instantly then we don't want to make three api call instead we wait for some time if user doesn't type for one second then we trigger our api so for that case i want to use my debounce okay and after that we collect the latest changes or you can say latest value of underscore query and we will call our get movie list and pass our api key so api key is not there pass your query so i'm gonna create a simple variable naming api key so you will use your api and i'm gonna use my api okay so that's it everything is finished from our view model side now i'm gonna create one more file for our composable so i'm gonna call this thing movie screen this is a file and here i'm gonna create a composable naming movie screen the input or the parameter would be our view model movie search view model so first thing i'm gonna create a variable naming result and use our view model movie list value so basically our result is now containing the value of movie list and the second one is our query so view model dot query dot so we are going to collect this in a form of a state because if our query will change we want that our composable is recomposed because we need to update our text field so that is why all right so we don't have the compose dependencies in our build dot so in order to add all the dependencies which we need for compose what i am doing simply create a new activity now this is a trick you will use this trick or you will use whatever you, you whatever you know so go to your gallery empty compose activity next finish this so it will automatically add all the required dependency for jetpack compose which we want <coughs> all right so go to your build dot gradel movie ui layer so here you can see it add a lot of dependencies so what i'm gonna do go my module app level build dot grill and copy this all stuff come back and paste that stuff here because it exactly the same remove this thing because it already present on the top let's sync your project again and come back in our movie screen so i'm gonna use scaffold here so within our scaffold we have top bar so in the top bar we will use text field so it require value and a on value change so in order to use value i am using my query value and within our on value change i am going to use my view model dot set query and pass the string okay and within our scaffold scope i am going to use log d because this error is coming up because we didn't use this padding values so i'm gonna lock at this padding values error would be gone it's time to manage our all three state like loading state error state and the success state so first i'm gonna use my result dot is loading if it is true then i'm gonna create a box 
modifier film excise and my content alignment is on the center it will contain a circular progress indicator uh, similarly like this we have a uh, result dot error if it is not blank that means something is uh, you know the initial value error is empty string but if it is not empty that means error will be uh, there during the execution of our rest api or use cases so i'm going to create a box and this box is taking all of our space content alignment is on the center and lastly we have our text now this text is actually show me the error message so i'm going to use result dot error that's it this is our error message now import our text so now it's time to manage our success state so in order to check whether our state is success or not i'm gonna use my result data and check if it is not null because initially it was null if it is not null that means something is initialized so i'm gonna check first thing if our list is empty so we don't have list we have it if it is empty that means uh, empty list coming back from our web service so i'm gonna use box modifier fill max size and my content alignment would be on the center and again i'm gonna use text and simply so that nothing found okay and if it is not the case then we are going to use something which is called lazy vertical grid so use lazy vertical grid so it require column so in order to uh, initialize this I'm gonna use grid cells dot adaptive and we pass our minimum size which is 128 dp now import this and within our content it's just like a lazy column content we have items and within this you need to pass your list which you want to render on our lazy vertical grid so I want to render my result dot data basically list of movies so pass your list of movies here import this now you will see it will uh, give me movie basically in this trailing lambda it will give one by one movie and we are going to render that movie so i'm going to create my list item so we have a box and this box has a modifier and within this modifier i'm gonna give height 200 dp and lastly i'm gonna provide border so the border width is 1 dp and i'm gonna provide color of white okay now within this i'm gonna use async image so async image is something which is coming up from coil library so go to your build dot cradle and here i'm gonna add that dependency so implementation coil image library coil image loading library and use coil so now it's time to use our async image so in model you need to pass the url so my url is coming from it dot image url and my content description is null and i'm gonna use content scale which is fit all right so this is our simple list item now come back in our scaffold top bar and within this we have our text field now i'm gonna mod you, you know uh, change the behavior of text field so for that i'm gonna use something which is called colors and within this we have text field default so because i'm using text field so i'm gonna choose text field color and within this uh, we have a lot of you know uh, parameters where we pass our color so i'm gonna use a disable indicator color as a transparent and i'm gonna use my focused indicator color is also color dot transparent all right and lastly i'm gonna use placeholder so my placeholder is simply say search movie okay and we have trailing icon so this trailing icon is basically show me the search icon so image in our image vector i'm gonna use icons default search and the content description again null 
okay so this is our text field so this text field has a you know a finite width but i want that text field is gonna take whole of the width so in order to provide the whole width i'm gonna use modifier modifier fill max width all right that's it uh, so now it's time to use this movie screen in our internal movie feature api so go in our internal movie feature api and here i'm gonna use our movie screen it requires view model so we are gonna initialize this view model so while view model use hilt view model okay so we don't have the dependency go to your build.gradal ui package and here use that implementation implementation dagger hilt dot and you will see this hilt compose navigation simply sync now import this and simply pass this view model here okay so we need to pass the type so the type would be movie search view model all right so now go back to your build dot griddle and here everything is fine all right so now it's time to execute our application and see whether it is running or not so we got an error the error would be the version 1.2.0 of a compose compiler require 1.7.0 so basically this kotlin compiler extension version is 1.2.0 but we use compose ui version 1.4.0 alpha 05 so in order to use that ui version you have to change this kotlin compiler extension version from 1.2.0 to 1.4.0 and uh, i found few more issues the main issue is present in our core network and within our data providers we have our api service dot get movie list and this is the place where i you know make mistake a silly mistake so in order to fix this go to your dependency injection network module and here you will you will see this three is also present here and in our api service i also add this three in here and this is our actual url so you will see this three is two times so what we will do go back in our network module and remove this three from here okay now it will it will work we will do one more thing in our app module because we will use dagger hilt in our data layer and domain layer of a movie feature so this module must be connected to our app module otherwise the dagger hilt dependency will not resolved so in our module app level i am gonna add these two layer so movie domain and the movie data now sync your project and run this application again so our app executed successfully uh in the first time because our query is empty it will return us empty list so it is fine now when i type harry in our emulator let us see what are, what will the response okay so it will return something but uh, we saw nothing this is because our image url is only contain the poster path it doesn't contain the exactly image url so we need to modify a little bit in our mapper class so go to your mapper uh, which is present in our data layer so within this mapper we have this it poster path only we have poster path we don't have the full url so we have to convert this poster part into full url i'm gonna create a function naming make full url send our path into it and here this is our actual url and at the end i'm gonna utilize my path so i'm gonna use this make full url here now it will return me the full url or you can say full image url now i'm gonna execute my application again and see whether it is working or not all right so our app execute and when i type harry let us see the response all right so we successfully got the response from our backend okay so this is the first feature which we implemented successfully